Hi, I'm Dr. Rudy Cashman. We're going to have a very interesting evening tonight. I'm going to teach you how to live to be 100 and have a sound mind. A very interesting subject. You know, I'm a mind body doctor, a wellness doctor, and a neurosurgeon for 41 years, but I'm only 39 years old. <laughs> Let's have a little bit of fun. I formed originally the Mind Body Index, which is a list of uh, illnesses uh, to my left, uh, your right, uh, of illnesses caused by the human mind from stress, largely, irritable bowel, back pain, headaches, a whole list. And uh, to understand them better is very important to you so that you don't take too many medications, don't have too many injections, don't have too many surgeries. Uh, they can be relieved by stress techniques, yoga techniques. For example, I own a yoga studio, a wellness studio in Lufen Hospital. Uh, they could be treated uh, there. But the main subject tonight uh, really is the secret of the longevity mind body index, a list of things that you could do to be of sound mind, avoid a lot of illnesses, live to be 100, uh, and not, have, not develop uh, dementia or memory problems. There are definite things that you can do to prevent that. So let me go down the main uh, longevity mind body endings to begin with, and then we're going to get uh, quite more specific, and I'll tell you what, what I call 10 biomarkers uh, that uh, are the main uh, PowerPoints, uh, really. First of all, eating is the most important thing. What you eat is really critical uh, as to the number of illnesses you're going to develop. A plant-based diet, frankly, is the best way to be of normal weight, avoid diabetes, probably never get vascular disease, heart attacks, or stroke. So eating properly, I wrote a book called The Secret of the Non-Diet. Not a diet, it's a way of eating. I eat piles of food myself. I mean piles of food for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, but it is highly dense, nutritious food, uh, and I weigh 146 pounds, which is a proof of the point, because my dad owned a deli. I love to eat, but I eat good, nutrient-dense food. So really, the way you eat is number one. Number two on the list is exercise. How much you exercise uh, is extremely important. Uh, that is really the number two uh, marker, and throughout life. I'll show you later that exercising at age 80 or 90, you can double and triple your strength. Very interesting. How much education you've had determines, frankly, uh, how good your mind works uh, at a later age. Much less dementia, much uh, less Alzheimer's disease in ed educated individuals. Uh, that you have a normal body mass index. Body mass index is a measurement of your height and your weight. It's based on a graph uh, in that uh, if it's normal, odds of you developing vascular disease, diabetes, actually is quite low. So that's a good marker. How much adult education you receive is also quite important. Continue education, reading books, taking college co courses as days go on, much lower incidence of memory loss uh, and dementia. That you have a purpose in life is extremely important. For example, at my age 39 here, obviously <laughs> that's the correct age, uh, I uh, practice full-time neurosurgery uh, at age 74. Uh, I'm writing four books at the same time, give, give lectures, play tennis all the time. I just participate in three events in the city tennis tournament. I mean, what's the point? The, the point is that to stay very active, to have a purpose, uh, to, to continue education, I read ferociously, uh, keeps you mentally alert, a very uh, important thing. Uh, to get a good night's sleep is another marker. Uh, it, to, it's very important to, to reduce the amount of stress in your life is another very important uh, marker because it reduces steroids in your blood. Steroids cause you to gain weight, and, and steroids destroy your body. They destroy your eicosanoids, your intel chips of your body. So to keep stress under control is very uh, important. I think to do some yoga, meditative techniques, relaxation techniques, I think are quite important. Uh, spirituality is another marker. I think to go to church on a regular basis, no matter what uh, your faith is. So even just to be spiritual, uh, people who do this, that, that uh, have group activities, I think the patients, people who do this, li live a great deal longer, uh, I think is an important thing. And don't retire, uh, don't retire. And uh, I think that's a mistake. Or if you retire, uh, take a two week vacation, start another job, do something else. It's very important for the physical body uh, and uh, for the brain. Uh, Power of Positive Thinking, Norman Vincent Peale wrote a uh, books, a patient of mine, 
who uh, cured his wife or something, he worked for Norma Vincent Peale, walked in one day with three boxes, and gave them to me as a present. 21 books of Norma Vincent Peale. I've read them three times. Power of Positive Thinking. You can if you think you can. Visualization. That's all Norma Vincent Peale stuff. And uh, very important to keep in your life. You can print them off my uh, website, cashmanbuyingbody.com. You can print off the uh, PowerPoints uh, from it, the most important uh, points. Uh, and to use brain-challenging things to stay active, puzzles, Sudoku. On my website, uh, on the first page, cashmanmindbody.com, there's a little brain on the left. If you hit that, it leads to the memory page. Very good to look at. Very good to look at. I have uh, probably there's enough there to last six months to, to, for you to actively use computers, computer games. Uh, Pogo, for example, a great website. All those websites are on, on my uh, cashmanmindbody.com. There's enough there for six months. Uh, you could uh, play cards and games and keep a very active mind. Don't do it eight hours a day. Uh, do it a half hour a day or an hour a day. It sharpens your mind. There isn't any question uh, about it. And keep a normal blood pressure is quite important. Uh, develop a lot of hobbies is extremely important. Uh, woodworking, for example. Uh, playing a musical instrument. Uh, five years ago, I started taking uh, piano lessons and, and, and uh, I started playing the saxophone. You wouldn't believe it. I could learn to play the saxophone. I can play the tenor, the alto, and the piano sax now. I can't believe it. I don't have any natural talent, but I took a lesson uh, once a week, and now I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good at it. And lastly, this is about 20 of them I gave to you here, right off the Longevity Mind Body Index. I don't have any toxic habits. Smoking, drinking too much, and drugs will destroy your life. You want to live to be 100, you can't be doing any of these things. So, and with that, let's go into much more specific things, uh, how to live to be 100. This is a very interesting PowerPoint. You'll be able to print it off my website. Uh, and uh, so let's live to be 100, okay? Let's control the aging process best that we can. Add years to your life. Add life to your years. Be intelligent at 100. That's what I'm aiming at. Jack LaLanne wrote a wonderful book. He's 96 years old. I think it's a good book to read. I think it's uh, quite important. Your lifestyle is really what you can control. There are some things that are not controllable. Forget about them. There's nothing you can do about it. But there are many things you can control. Probably 80% of things that occur in your life, you can control. Let's work on that. Let's prolong our vitality. And uh, so the main markers of vitality, as I mentioned already, uh, what you eat is extremely important. To mainly eat a vegetarian, vegan, plant-based type of way of eating at least 80% of the time. It doesn't have to be 100% of the time, but 80% of the time uh, I think is quite important. My book, The Secret of the uh, Non-Diet, I think would be a good book to read. Dr. Joe Furman's Eat to Live, very good books to read. They're all listed on my, uh, uh, my webpage. Uh, how much you exercise is critical at any age. I'm going to drive that point today. I think you'll, you will understand what I'm talking about. And how much are you motivated? I wrote a book recently, came out, matter of fact, this week, The Secret of Motivation to Wellness. I have a DVD on a book on it. I think it'd be good to read because some of us have a hard time getting motivated. But you must make up your mind. This, this is what I want to achieve. I want to, want to uh, be healthy, vital. I want to live to be 100, 110. It can be done. But you're going to have to do certain things. And, and, and I will tell you today what they are. And, it, and what is your purpose in life? I think this is very important. I feel so fortunate. I feel so lucky. I have a purpose. And uh, I love being a doctor. I mean, some people like being a doctor. I tell you honestly, I love being a doctor. It's a privilege. I don't see any doctor could retire and they're still healthy. I don't see it. And, uh, and uh, there's so much joy in it every day, uh, even today, for example. And uh, uh, so how motivated are you? And uh, sarcopenia, that's a term. Sarco meaning body. Penia means lack of. Lack of muscle strength really is sarcopenia. It's, it's a fairly new term, uh, it, but uh, extremely important. The main element that forces people into the disability zone, if your muscles in the skirt will become too weak. I saw a patient in the office today, had a brace on, had had a back fusion, had had major heart disease, and I think he wanted a back operation, and, uh, but he had had two previous heart attacks, and I gave him a good lecture on sarcopenia, how to strengthen his muscles. You see, at any age, we can double or triple our muscle strength. We can't double or triple our heart strength. That's been scientifically proven. But we can double and triple our muscle strength up to age 100 if you work at it. In probably 120 days, you can double it uh, most of the time. So I gave him a good lecture on that. I, I gave him a book to read. A lot of this material that I'll be talking about tonight came out of a book uh, called Biomarkers 
by, uh, by uh, Evans uh, and, and uh, Rosenberg, excellent book. Uh, I'm going to refer to this a number of times. And, and I had, had him read a little bit of that in the office, and, and he was very thankful and, and avoided an operation, I think, and I think he will get better. Re what's osteoporosis is all about? We all say, well, it's lack of calcium. I'll tell you what osteoporosis is all about. It's about lack of exercise is what it's all about. The muscles make the bones move, and if you're not moving and just laying in bed, your uh, calcium is going to leach out of the bone, so you're going to urinate it out. But if you're using those muscles and that electric activity for muscular action, uh, calcium will be laid down and your bones get stronger. The biggest cause of compression fractures, which are almost 10 times more common in women than men after age 60, is from sarcopenia, lack of muscle strength. It's the muscles we need to aim at. It's not just the calcium by a long shot, by a long shot. And uh, it's a major cause of broken vertebrae, is sarcopenia. Uh, every day you get older, that's a law. It's not avoidable, forget about it. But you can control the rate that it occurs. You can control the rate that it occurs. And uh, some are weak and others are uh, energetic. It's, the, it's your mind, it, it's really your mind uh, that, that will determine that. What are the 10 biomarkers we're gonna talk about Never too old to exercise to get more uh, specific. Uh, we don't care how old you are. That's irrelevant to me. Your body recalls. Your body has memory. Your body remembers what it's like to be well. There's a system of exercise actually called body recall coming out of Memphis, Tennessee, and I have one of my yoga instructors going to, to uh, is being trained in that. And that's the reason I think we can increase our strength so much uh, so fitness after age 50 becomes much more important than we're younger uh, because of falls uh, we can take and also has related to metabolism. So exercise when you're young makes a difference because your body recalls what it's like to exercise. So exercise and it does have benefits even in old age, even if you turn into a couch potato for a period of time, how much you exercise as a young person will in the end make a difference. Uh, so maximize your body uh, program to your age. We become a little slower, but we can exercise and build our muscles. We lose about 30% of our muscle cells as we get older, but they can greatly increase in size. They can hypertrophy. Uh, so your chronological age is, you know, my stated age, uh, but then we have a biological age. You see, my stated age may be above 70, but my biological age, at least I tell people, I think it's 39. I just played three events in the city tournament. I was in the finals of uh, one of them. But I'm only 39 years old, but a neurosurgeon for 41 years. How do you explain that? My biological age is a little younger. Uh, so maintaining health for the longest possible period of time is what we like to do. It makes life more enjoyable. Maintain your vitality. It's the biological age that counts. Uh, that counts. I have gray hair, I had it at age 48, at age 48. But I look only 29, 39, but I'm 74. Are you confused? Eliminate all those things that cannot be changed. Forget about them. Work like a dog to change the things that you can change. That's what's important, what you eat, how much uh, uh, that you ex uh, exercise. It, it's inside your body, you, you may be tremendously younger, or you may be tremendously older, depending on what you're doing. So let's go through the 10 biomarkers that you can alter. Your muscle mass, your strength, you can alter that by working out regularly, uh, and I'll show you how to do that. Your basic metabolic rate, the rate that you uh, metabolize uh, your food that you eat, uh, you can change, you, you can uh, improve it by exercising regularly. Uh, your body fat percentage, uh, you can uh, alter that by losing weight, uh, exercising, by watching the food that you eat, uh, very important. Our body fat increases naturally as we get a bit older, although we may weigh the same, but we have much more fat and less muscle mass, and that becomes uh, critical. Your aerobic capacity, your ability to use oxygen uh, to, to uh, produce ATP uh, energy, uh, uh, that can change. And uh, your body's blood sugar tolerance is a, is a marker of aging. How, how how can you metabolize blood sugar? How easily do you metabolize it? Uh, your cholesterol, HDL ratio, remember your, your total cholesterol should be around 150. Your HDL, your good uh, cholesterol, uh, which cleans the arteries out, your high density uh, lipoproteins, uh, that ratio of cholesterol to HDL is quite important. Your blood pressure is extremely important. Uh, 
high blood pressure leads to strokes, heart disease at a, a very uh, young age. Your bone density has an effect on your aging also. How, how brittle are your bones? A light fall and you break them, or they're strong and, and, you, and, and you make it. Uh, your body's ability to regulate its internal temperature actually becomes important as we get a day older. But the most important four, let's spend a little more time on, uh, on uh, are them, the muscle mass. Your mass or your muscles, your body fat percentage is the most important thing. Your strength, your strength is extremely important. Your basic metabolic rate, the rate you burn calories is important, and your body fat percentage, that, that's critical. You know, we do the BMI, we measure the height and the weight, but that doesn't tell you the body fat percentage. That's important to know that. Prevent sarcopenia, prevent the muscle loss that we talked about that causes you uh, to fall uh, because you're not, you're, you're not strong enough. Too much body fat, too little muscle. This becomes critical as the day goes on. So the fat-muscle ratio is important, not just weight loss. It's your muscle, fat. because some bodybuilders with a huge amount of muscles, their BMI actually may be out of whack a bit because they have huge muscles. But most of us, <laughs> unfortunately, don't suffer from that. And uh, so build muscle at the expense of fat. Your body composition is critical. So body mass and lean body mass, that's the difference. That's the difference. Uh, the body fat burn, only three calories per pound a day. If you have fat on you, uh, just sitting there, it'll burn about three calories a day. That's not very much. But muscle that's just sitting there, you're not using it, you're not using it, that's burning 50 to 80 calories just sitting there. You see how important muscle tissue is now? How important muscle tissue is? Building muscles in the elderly is the key to rejuvenation. The key to rejuvenation and uh, improve your muscle fat ratio. Uh, muscle causes metabolism to rise because they burn calories. We uh, spoke about that. Increases your aerobic capacity. Your ability to use oxygen at a muscular level uh, is determined by the amount of muscle tissue that you have. So it triggers muscles to use more insulin and improves its sensitivity. Insulin sensitivity really uh, is related to diabetes type two. If, if you have um, uh, insensitive uh, to uh, you know, insulin, uh, you have insulin resistance, you're much more likely to get type 2 diabetes, which we all know is a killer, because 20 years off your life or you lose your, your vision or uh, your kidneys and, and uh, have heart attacks at a young age. So uh, uh, build up your good cholesterol, your HD, HDL, exercise does that. Exercise increases uh, HDL. So the lean body mass declines with age. You lose about 6.6 uh, .6 pounds of lean body mass each decade of life. So you lose muscles as you go on. So that's why exercise becomes much more important as we move a day on. But it can be increased or decreased depending on the amount of use you give them. Are you working out regularly? Are you lifting some weights every, every other day uh, like we should? Uh, so muscles frequently used will maintain the status quo. So if you're using muscles frequently, for example, I can see that because I've been tennis three days a week, I noticed the, the hypertrophy of my right uh, shoulder area hasn't changed a great deal uh, from um, getting a day older because I, I use it three times a week at least and I operate uh, quite a bit uh, using them and I lift s uh, some light weights uh, all week long. And, uh, so, but muscles pushed to the limits of its capacity will grow and gain strength at any age. That's the point I want to teach you tonight. Using muscles regularly uh, will keep them at the, at the status quo, but if you push them to its limits. That's what we're going to be talking about, to its limits. They can grow almost 5% each time you use them. 3 to 5% growth in your muscles if you work out every other day. In other words, you, that's why I can say you can double your strength probably in 120 days. I got this out of the medical literature. This is medically and scientifically proven. It almost seems uh, miraculously. Uh, how do you build your strength? Remember, we have skeletal muscles and involves nerves and bones. Uh, during aging, getting a day older, we lose our motor units of nerves and muscles about 20%, between 30 and 70. Some of our muscles go away, some of our nerves go away. So we have to make up for that. And uh, we have slow and fast twitch muscle fibers, okay? As we get a day on, we lose the fast twitch fibers, the one that you can explosively uh, use. And that's why marathon runners and racers, you notice at 25, 30, they start slowing down. That's because they lose them uh, through 
of the aging process. Not much can be done about that. But the, but the slow twitch muscle fibers, the slow twitch muscle fibers, we don't lose hardly any of them. They can even be retrained at age 80 or 90. They have found that you can, uh, if you get 80, 90 year olds to work out regularly, you can double and triple their strength. Look at how much better their lives would be. They can be able to walk better. They'll have less falls, less uh, fractures. They will live longer. This is really critical information, critical information. So we keep our, our slow twitch muscles. We lose the fast twitch ones. That's why we, you know, I play tennis to on a regular basis. No doubt I'm a little bit slower than I used to be, but I made up with it with through, uh, through other things. And, uh, and I'm still, uh, frankly, personally, I mean, although at, at my young age, 39 here, I feel a better player now than I, when I played for a couple of months for IU. And, and I don't think it's because of poor memory. I really believe that. I think I've learned a lot more, know a lot more, have a better drop shot. Uh, I, I, I really believe that. So fast twitch muscle fibers decline with age, not the slow ones. Building your strength. Use them or lose them. Use them or lose them. And uh, age-related uh, loss of all fast twitch fibers occurs slowly uh, over, over time. Uh, slower, more measured body movement and partially explains age-related loss and strength. We slow down a little bit, no, 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 no doubt about that, but we can make up for it. So muscle size and growth at any age, muscle hypertrophy, we can indeed look like Jack Elaine. Look at the guy at age uh, uh, 96. I mean, he looks great. So we, and, and he works out regularly, obviously, and we can increase the size uh, of our uh, muscles by using them uh, uh, regularly. We lose almost 30% of our total number of muscle cells between 20 and 70. If you lose 30% of the cells, but you can increase the other ones in size two or three times, so what difference does it make? Not a lot of difference. Really not a lot of, not, not a lot of difference. So we can increase the size two or three times at any age. What are some uh, reactions related to aging? We slow down in our metabolism. Our, metabol our BMR slows down naturally a bit, so we need to learn to exercise and increase it. We have a steady increase in body fat, especially in women. You have to watch it at menopause. All of a sudden, uh, the, the muscles decline and we develop more fat. We may the same, even weigh the same, but the body composition has changed, and we have to be, be aware of that. And we have a declining aerobic capacity, uh, our VO2 max, which determines oxygen utilization at a, at a, a cellular muscular level, uh, goes down a bit as we get a day older. Uh, and there's a continual loss in bone density a bit, so we have to watch it. We have to eat uh, more uh, vegetarian, more vegetable type diet, which have a lot of calcium in it, take some vitamin D supplements to, to keep our, our calcium level off. But the best way to increase calcium deposition in the bones is exercise, is exercise, weight bearing. So the impact of exercise on muscle strength. So this decline in muscle strength and size is not inevitable, it's not inevitable. Muscles need exercise at 80%, not 1RM. What's 1RM? That's the maximum weight you could, that you can lift uh, with one motion, okay? Just the max. You can't do any more than that. Say I, I use 30 pounds and I flex my biceps, and that's all I can do. That's 1RM. That's 1RM. Why do we want to know this? Because what you want to do now to increase the size of that muscle, I must exercise at 80% of that weight, at 80% of that weight, okay? If it was 10 pounds, then that my one RM, then I'd be doing my exercise at 80% of that, and I would do about 15 repetitions. And as soon as I can do that without difficulty, and now we're gonna do 20, then you increase uh, your uh, one RM, and you increase uh, the weight that you work with. If you work at 80% of the RM, your muscle will increase in size and strength. They have found if you work at 50% of that, your muscles will not grow. You can double your strength if you do that in 120 days. In 120 days. I mean, what a beautiful uh, information. And uh, you can have a daily increase in extension. This is extension, extending your arm. That's extension. If you do, you do it this way at 80% of 1RM, of 3.3% a day. An inflection, pulling forward, of 6.5% of increase in strength 
in one day if you're working at 80% of one RM. Wow. I mean, this is something. This is not that you're going to, a year from now, you're going to look better. You're going to look better within months, within a month or two. And if you're eating the right food to boot, uh, you can see uh, you can have tremendous change in, in your body uh, in just a short period of time. So how did they measure the size of muscles and studied that in its relationship to fat? They did see computerized scans and biopsies. They put a needle in there and did biopsies. And I saw pictures of it. I mean, it, it's proven. So muscle mass and strength can be regained no matter what your age. Wow, beautiful words. And uh, your basic metabolic rate, remember we talked about the, way, the rate that metabolism occurs in your body is very important because if you're sitting there and your BMR is quite high, it's burning up calories, turning up calories while you're not doing a thing. So it's important to keep that high. How do you keep it high? And uh, your BMR or ca caloric expenditure at rest falls with age. There's a natural decline in your BMR. That's not good because if you keep on eating the same amount of food, guess what's going to happen? You're going to be obese. You're going to be obese and get overweight. So if your BMR is going, is, is going down, uh, you need to increase your activity. You need to raise it up. Otherwise, your caloric burn goes down. And if you're eating the same amount of calories, uh, you are uh, gain, going to be overweight or obese. Very important thing to know. So your lean body mass is the key to, to figuring out uh, a figure for that. An older person's reduction in muscle mass is almost wholly responsible for the gradual reduction in the BMR. They, they lose their muscle mass and their BMR goes down. Because remember I said muscles at rest can burn 50 to 80 calories per day doing nothing. Can you imagine if you're using them, you're going to have a great uh, uh, calorie burn. So the BMR declines about 2% per year at age 20 and uh, after age 20. So we had the battle of the bulge. Metabolism falls, but he eats the same amount of food. A 70-year-old person needs 500 fewer calories per day to maintain his or her body weight than an average 25-year-old. Pretty important to know. If you're eating the same amount of food, you're going to be an obese adult. You're certainly not going to live to be 100. And, and, uh, and fat is destructive, actually, to mentation. Uh, to fat has a great uh, inflammatory effect on your brain cells. It can lead to dementia and advanced dementia. So to stay trim, very important to your mind and intelligence. That's how you're going to be intelligent at 100 to have a normal BMR. It's quite important. So we gain fat as we age, even if our body weight has not increased that much. Our muscles shrink while fat tissue accumulates. A 65-year-old woman is about 43% adipose tissue. That's scary. I mean, that's scary. I mean, so women especially have to watch it, especially after menopause. Uh, a 25-year-old woman, body fat is around 25%. So the body fat ratio, muscle ratio, uh, remember that muscle weighs more than body fat. So you want more muscle. And uh, uh, losing fat should be the role in gaining muscle mass uh, is important. So judge, now body mass index, judging Weight in relation to your height is your BMI, okay? But uh, find out what your body mass index is. Uh, mine is about uh, tw uh, 23, which is fairly ideal. Yours ought to be about 25. But remember, if you're a huge muscular individual lifting weights all the time, your BMI may be 27, and that really is still normal uh, because you weigh more. Your muscles uh, uh, weigh more. And uh, uh, you can also use abdomen hip ratios. So with your fully relaxed abdomen, uh, measure uh, at the umbilicus, at the belly button, and then a ratio to around the hip. And measure, and, uh, measure that as another way of dealing with it. Uh, uh, the BMI does not tell you, though, your percent body fat. Remember, I, I, I said this before. Uh, fat distribution. Let's think of pear shape and apple shape. Apple shape is not a good shape for man to have because abdominal fat uh, is full of 20 nasty chemicals and the fat is in your omentum. That's in, it's, it's not under the skin. It's in your abdominal cavity, bathing your pancreas in your liver. And abdominal fat uh, is destructive. Uh, much more likely to have type 2 diabetes if you have a, a pot belly, especially so uh, in, in the men. Women store more around the uh, hip area. And uh, so people with big hips and, and a trim waist have actually high levels of HDL, the good cholesterol. It's if that waist... Yeah, that pot belly, that, that's uh, uh, distractive. 
And uh, so, but the uh, large waistline is independent risk factor for heart disease, stroke, and diabetes. So if you have a big waistline, uh, a, a pot belly, apple shape, uh, it, you're much more likely to have type 2 diabetes, heart disease, vascular disease, stroke, dementia, autoimmune disease, arthritis. That's destructive. You got to get rid of it. You want to live to be 100 and have good health. It's not going to happen uh, if you have that. And I see patients with, the, unfortunately, with these problems on a daily basis, a daily basis. So how can exercise alter body fat? Eating the right food and exercise are the important things. Remember I talked about the high dense nutrient time way of eating. If you can't be uh, you know, 100% vegetarian or vegan, which many, most of us couldn't, be 80%, that's fine. 80% or so, you, and, and you, you're not gonna get those nasty diseases and, and live a long life and have a sound mind. So the point is to improve your insulin resistance and decrease diabetes. Insulin resistance occurs uh, because you have 70 trillion cells, and these 70 trillion cells have little receptors coming off of them, and fat in your body makes these receptors sticky. And when these are sticky, insulin cannot come in there and bring glucose into the cell. It cannot unlock the key that opens the door to the cell uh, because the fat interferes with it. Uh, and that's insulin resistance, is the fat in the outside of the cell caught in these receptors. And what lead, does insulin resistance uh, lead to? Strokes, heart attacks, type 2 diabetes, hypertension. You don't want insulin resistance. It's largely related to the amount of fat uh, in the body. And uh, an easy way to lose a pound a week, for example, uh, to, to burn up 300 calories a day in exercising and maybe get rid of one habit, no dessert. That's 500 calories. 500 calories seven days a week, that's 3,500 calories, that's one pound. That's a great way of losing weight right? without any, anything radical needing to happen. So it's not that, that hard. And uh, reducing caloric intake is a losing battle. It's a losing battle. Don't starve yourself. It doesn't work. Eat the right food. I eat the nutrient-dense way of eating, and I eat lots of food. I don't diet. I don't count calories. There's no portion control. I have no interchange things. I just eat the right food. Uh, and exercise regularly, and, and, and uh, frankly, I almost got to work to, to keep my weight up. And uh, the, I went to take Dr. Joel Furman's course two weeks ago once more to learn, uh, to get myself up to date on the latest uh, way of eating, and I followed his way of eating 100% of the time, so the 80, which I've been doing, and I'm losing a pound a day. And he says so in his book that would happen. But at this certain point, I need to stop that. But uh, but I, I pounded a day. I lost uh, weight to 158, now I'm 146. And, uh, and uh, uh, th to prove the point, I'm teaching this, so I want to prove it. I live the part, but I try to teach it. And uh, so reducing caloric intake is a losing battle. Starvation diets, Atkins diets, they don't work. Dr. Fraud calls the Atkins diet a fraud. It's right in this book. Dr. Barnard did the same thing. I didn't say it. It's in the books. And uh, so improving your aerobic capacity, improving the body's ability to process oxygen with a given time. That's aerobic capacity. What's your aerobic capacity? Most people's aerobic capacity declines with age a little bit, okay? And that's the reason the marathon runners are as good at, at uh, 30 uh, than uh, that they were at uh, 25. So your aerobic capacity is typically 30 to 40 percent smaller than, 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 than uh, as an adult, I mean a, a, as a, a young person. It so declines 30, 40 uh, percent over time. So we have to work at keeping it up. It can be affected if we, uh, we walk rapidly, regularly, or intermittent training, which is a good one. You walk slowly, then rapidly. Intermittent training is really almost the best. Uh, we can improve our aerobic uh, ca capacity. Uh, the decline is less than people who exercise regularly. A couch potato is a rapid decline in aerobic capacity. You're laying around, your aerobic capacity is going to decline quickly. But you can revive it still quicker if you were an athlete when you were young. So let's continue with the aerobic capacity a little bit. Anatomical changes occur in your rib cage that affect the chest, swallow, and lungs. You can't quite expand them as good um, uh, as you get a day older. Your expansion, and, and some people with bad habits, of course, obviously it's a lot worse. Uh, your heart rate declines with age a little bit, something to, to remember. And uh, your maximum heart rate formula uh, to figure out uh, what is a, a normal, a good pulse for you, there's a formula called 220 minus your age. Why, why is it different for a young person than an old people? Because a heart rate declines a bit, the heart gets a little bit smaller as we get a day on. Things you can't really, you can affect them some, but not t 
as much as you can make the muscles grow. You have a much harder time uh, strengthening your heart than you do your muscles. Important point to, rem to remember, uh, to, to improve the heart of an 80 or 90 year old is a lot tougher than improving the muscle strength. But it is actually the oxygen utilization at the muscular level that's extremely important. So to aim for the muscles uh, is equally as important as aiming for, uh, for the heart. Uh, so as we get a day on, we, our heart gets a little smaller. If, if it's a fairly you know, healthy heart, unless it's failing or something, and our heart rate goes down a little bit. So how do you measure your aerobic capacity? Your VO2 max, it's called. Like I, I knew a cardiologist uh, from Virginia who, who uh, 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 Armstrong, he, he had him as a high school student and his VO2 max was extremely high that age so they knew he was going to be a world champion. And it's tough to change your VO2 max through the years. You can improve it a bit, but you cannot improve it a lot. You know, if, if his was a certain figure at that age in high school, they can improve it a little bit, but they uh, cannot uh, improve it uh, uh, a lot. How do you measure it? They hook you up to EKG uh, and an oxygen thing that you breathe through, and they can figure out on a treadmill, for example, your VO2 uh, max. Because uh, another way to measure it, a, a good way to measure it, and uh, what uh, uh, I did the other weekend is find a high school track, uh, four times around usually is a mile, and they have a graft, and this graft is in the in back of this book, Biomarkers, uh, for different ages, uh, and then you relate it uh, to the pulse after the one mile, and that gives you an idea of what your VO2 max is. A great, to, to measure, good way to measure your VO2 maximum capacity at any age. The graphs are in the, in the back of that book. So aerobic capacity as an indicator of overall cardiovascular fitness is excellent. And I think a good way to do it is to go around the track, but make sure your doctor says it's okay uh, that uh, you're capable of doing this type of uh, activity. Still on a treadmill might be a good way to start and then, then do it that way. And uh, uh, so the VO2 max does not have to decline with age. Uh, and, and that's uh, been proven. If you exercise regularly, it doesn't decline much with age. But what I said, you can't improve it a lot, but you can avoid the decline. Very interesting. And uh, so VO2 max is a function of the amount of time an aging person is willing to spend working out. Interesting. You can improve it a tremendous amount. You can some. You can improve it some. Uh, but you can avoid that decline by exercising uh, regularly. And uh, the VO2 max shows how much air your lungs can utilize, how much air your lungs, uh, lungs can utilize. So cardiac output, what your heart puts out, is a function that does decrease with age, uh, and it may not be uh, totally reversible. It can be improved, proper eating, exercise, but it, it's not as reversible as muscle decline. Muscle decline can be tremendously reversed. And, uh, uh, so VO2 max is an indicator how well blood is reaching your muscles, and that can be improved. And uh, oxidative capacity, your muscles, how oxygen is utilized uh, uh, at the muscular level. That's what's important as you get a day older, your oxidative capacity. Ability of the muscles to utilize oxygen to convert the energy stored in carbohydrates and fat into a form of energy that supports physical activity. See, it's tough to bring pro to break protein down and use it as energy. You do it if you're starving, uh, but usually it's, it's carbohydrates. It's what's utilized most of the time at maximum uh, activity. And, uh, and, but we do break down fat from, use it from our muscles uh, and uh, uh, when the energy uh, uh, is, is needed. So inactivity reduces muscle cells and you reduce your oxidative capacity. That leads to fatigue. When I uh, see a patient, an older individual, and they're uh, fatigued all the time, they're trying to blame on thyroid, one thing or another. The thing I aim at, how much are you exercising? That's the first thing I aim at. I don't try to give them an extra vitamin or an extra thyroid here and there. I try to figure out how much is this person exercising. That can be a great cause uh, of uh, fatigue, that the oxidative capacity is not a uh, property. So exercise. Uh, conditions the muscles more than the heart. Remember that, more than the heart, and even more the brain. Exercise is four times more important for the brain function than actually body function. It's in the literature. So how to keep a sound mind, exercise is very important for memory, for memory problems, to avoid uh, memory problems. So aerobic exercise causes a large increase in the muscle oxidative capacity, ability to use oxygen, 
especially in older people. It burns up glucose, much less likely to have diabetes. And uh, uh, it's the muscle function, not the heart, that improves with exercise in the elderly. So sarcopenia is destructive to your overall conditioning. And what I said, sarcopenia, loss of muscle mass as we uh, uh, get older, is destructive to overall conditioning and a big marker on the uh, longevity body-mind index uh, of good uh, health. Uh, your glucose tolerance, how do you, cal how do you tolerate glucose? That's an Im important uh, uh, point. Uh, and uh, the ability of our body to control blood sugar. With, with advancing age, it gradually loses the ability to take out the sugar from the blood in the bloodstream. Our glucose tolerance uh, goes down, so insulin level rises. So there's a natural rise in blood sugar as we get older. So we develop some glucose intolerance. You're much more likely to develop some diabetes uh, with people living in a nursing home, for example, or, or uh, uh, even at home. So it becomes very important uh, to pay attention to your blood sugar. And uh, your blood sugar levels rise with age, and you increase your chances of developing type 2 diabetes. Most of it, though, has to do with increasing fat stores and lack of exercise. That's what most of us associated with. So the, the uh, uh, glucose tolerance going down is mostly re related to a lack of exercise and fat stores, not the aging process. That's a big point. That's a big point. So most of the diabetes we're seeing as people get older really is related to a fat, lack of exercise, not because they're getting older. And so it's preventable. That's the beautiful news. It's preventable. And, uh, so by age 70, some 20% of women, 30% of uh, Twenty percent of men, thirty percent of women have an abnormal glucose tolerance curve. Very interesting. Uh, so your glucose tolerance more to do with increasing fat and loss of muscle mass. Creeping blood sugar intolerance is one of the most devastating of the so-called age-related changes. Keep an eye on that. So you got a, your body fat percentage extremely uh, important. The the beer belly seen in men and the role of fat seen in some women develop above the waistline increase your risk of diabetes because of glucose resistance, which develops from fat, making the receptor sticky, and glucose intolerance. So the nutrient-dense diet would prevent that. Read The Secret of the Non-Diet by Dr. Cashman, Dr. Furman's book, Eat to Live, very good books to read. So insulin insensitivity is affected by two factors associated with aging, increased body fat and activity. I think we got the point. Uh, so muscle is the primary site of glucose disposal. I mean, the brain uses at least 20, 30 percent of the glucose you use. Um, that, that, that tiny 30, uh, uh, three pound <laughs> piece of fat sitting up there. But the, but the muscles take care of about uh, 70 percent of the rest of it. And uh, so the glucose taken up by the muscles has three possible fates. You burn up with energy, you store it as glycogen in the muscles. Glycogen is the storage form uh, of sugar. We have about three pounds of it. I play in a tennis tournament. Uh, and probably lose 10 pounds in a, in a long match. Why is that? I lose three pounds of glycogen from the tennis match, and, and they have with them about seven pounds of water. So I lost 10 pounds. I drink a little water the next day. After all, I lost only maybe a pound, <laughs> okay? Water loss, water loss. You got a wedding coming up in a week, uh, exercise, you can lose 10 pounds, but you're gonna eat it back. And uh, Or stored as fat. It's not used as energy, or as glycogen is stored as fat. So dietary fat is the big villain of glucose resistance. We talked about that, and I explained that. So strength-building exercise is the key to relating your glucose, uh, to improving your glucose metabolism. And uh, your cholesterol HDL ratio are very important. Remember your cholesterol? And we talked about the good uh, cholesterol and, and, and the, the ratio important. But cholesterol is important. Your liver makes it, uh, although we eat too much of it for meat, obviously. The biggest source of it in our body is for meat. And, uh, but we do make some. Why? It's an important part of every cell in our body. So we need some cholesterol. Uh, and also we need it for transportation of some lipoproteins. Uh, so we, we do need some uh, essential fatty acids, which we get largely from omega-3. That's a good place to get it. Some nuts, it's a good place to get it. But don't get it from eating a bunch of uh, uh, meat. So the good cholesterol, HDL, cleans your arteries. The bad one, LDL, causes arteriosclerosis. It penetrates the uh, arterial wall and lays down plaque and you have strokes and heart attacks. So blood cholesterol's involvement in heart disease and stroke is what, what it's really all about. Cholesterol causes inflammation, and, uh, and the cholesterol are markers of heart disease. High cholesterol, you're likely to have heart disease and strokes. Plants have no cholesterol. Meat can be full of cholesterol, so eat a plant-based diet. A high a vegetable, bean, fruit, uh, 
food that has not been stripped of the phytochemicals because they have fiber in them. Fiber prevents absorption of a lot of fats and cholesterol. So eating nutrient-dense food is very important. Your total, your total cholesterol HDL ratio should be less than 4.5. Your harmful cholesterol LDL shouldn't be up more than 60 to 70 percent of your total cholesterol. Uh, so lowering, lowering this ratio, genetic makeup has something to do with it. 10 percent, 15 percent of the people uh, inherit uh, this from their uh, parents in that you notice the parents are dying at a young age. If that's the case, get your blood figures. Always know your blood figures, even at a young age, even an overweight teenager, or even underweight teenagers. Teenagers should know their, 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 their lipid profile. They don't study that today, but I'm telling you, it's important. 60% of teenagers today have elevated cholesterol. They're going to get type 2 diabetes as teenagers. So it's important to know your figures at any age. Don't find out your fat profile after your heart attack. Know about it at, at now so you can do something about it. And uh, so smoking and birth controls increase uh, your LDL. You can increase your HDL with exercise and lowering body fat. The best way to raise your good cholesterol is through exercise. Your blood pressure is an important marker of, uh, of the longevity mind-body index and it's important to control it. Uh, the uh, uh, black population, Mexican population, South American population uh, in this country have a tremendous amount of diabetes and hypertension. When they're living in the native cultures, like in Kenya in 1954, they couldn't find a, a, a black person who'd had a heart attack or stroke to show the med students. They were vegetarian. They come to this country, need the mad, toxic, sad American diet. And, and unfortunately, uh, hypertension, heart disease, and strokes is rampant. It's rampant. It needs to be uh, attacked. Uh, and, 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 and certainly, I'm uh, doing my, my, my part in it uh, to uh, teach people to eat the right food. Uh, most Americans, uh, all Amer the majority of all Americans are eating the mad, sad, toxic American diet. We lead the world in heart disease and strokes. Yes, yes, the China study proved that. Uh, uh, countries where they're eating the plant-based diet, they hardly have any cancer, heart attacks, strokes, dementia. They don't even know, they don't even know what dementia is. And uh, so very important ethnically to, to, to ethnically to pay some attention to this uh, maybe the church could do it. Maybe the Y could do it. Certainly, I work at it. I have a wellness center in a Y that's coming up in town here, and uh, on, on a, a crate where I plan to really teach proper way of eating. And uh, uh, so, large number of communities, populations around the world should know increase in blood pressure uh, with lifestyle uh, uh, type things because they eat the right food. Uh, they can afford the bad food. <laughs> okay, excess weight, lack of exercise. Uh, smoking uh, and alcohol hypertension are very dangerous and short, will shorten your life. So exercise, salt reduction, weight loss, stress reduction will cause a 30% reduction in, in hypertension. And, uh, and uh, uh, visit uh, my website. Uh, on uh, my uh, uh, website, we have uh, a proper way of eating, uh, stress reduction, uh, have a... Uh, uh, look uh, at the, on, uh, on the page of my website, there's a little brain on the uh, left side, and if you hit that, it goes to the next page, and it's all about memory. I think a very important part, we talked a lot ab about the physical aspect here, but I, I want you uh, to pay a lot of attention also to the mind aspect of getting day older. And as many people say to me, what's well, it used to be 100 if I'm out of sound mind, but I will tell you, if you follow the longevity mind-body index, uh, and, and you practice things that uh, are on there, unless you get hit by a Mack truck, <laughs> you can live to be 100 and be of sound mind. Most of the dementia that we're looking at today, you know, they talk a lot about the dementia today and, and Alzheimer's disease, which I personally think is an extension of dementia, not even a, a separate disease, is related to what we eat. Uh, it's the inflammatory factors uh, in fat that are doing it. So to have a look at my memory page, I think it would be very good for you. Uh, for one thing, the Longevity Mind-Body Index is on there, so you can print off the 20 things that I spoke about in the, in the beginning. The biomarkers, which I spoke about here, those 10, i will go, going to add them uh, to this uh, page, and, and, and they will be uh, on this uh, uh, page uh, probably within a uh, week or so, just so you can f uh, follow them. Uh, and uh, then I have all sorts of websites uh, on there 
uh, like Pogo, for example, where you can play cards and video games and Sudoku and, and doing a puzzle uh, daily uh, is a, a, a wonderful uh, thing to, to stay of a sharp mind. I have a site on there uh, about art where you can paint, where you can uh, uh, type in the artist's name and, and review their art, everything they ever painted. I have another one on Mozart's music, and you can hit that site and hit his songs and they'll play it for you uh, on the uh, computer. It's, it's a great one. Uh, on my web, uh, on the first page of my web page, I have two uh, uh, stress. If you have the stress logo, first of all, there's India playing some music, which is great. But I have also on, a, on there the uh, 20 prescriptions, uh, Rudy's 20 prescriptions for stress reduction. You might have a look at that uh, because stress, remember I said, is about the, the second or third biggest marker on the longevity mind-body index to live a long life. You can't be hardly stressful all your life. We all have stress. I mean, I got stress. I mean, I'm doing a surgery, writing four books, and I do yoga, and I run a mind-body institute. You don't think I got stress, but I've learned to control it. I have pauses in time where I relax every day. I've learned how to handle it. We all have stress, and some certainly a heck a lot more than others. Economic stress is unbelievable in people's lives today. But I have those 20 prescriptions on stress reduction. Uh, have a uh, uh, look at that. And at the bottom there, 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 there is a way of learning how to meditate. That's not religion. I'm not questioning religion here. Uh, meditation is a way of uh, relaxation. Uh, in the bottom of that, I even some uh, little icons you can hit that, uh, that uh, have to do with the walk in the park and, and hugging an animal, all things for relaxation. So I think to learn a lot about stress reduction, I think uh, would be a, a, a very good thing. So let's go over this. Uh, and thanks for listening. Uh, and summarize this a little bit. I mean, what, what are the big markers, really, of longevity and sound mind, which is, is what I'm trying to uh, t uh, teach you tonight? Uh, what we eat is critical. You've got to learn about what proper food is. We cannot continue to eat like most of America is doing today, the mad, sad, toxic American diet of, of fat, salt, and sugar. That's what it's all about. Fat, salt, and sugar. You go to a restaurant, try to order something that doesn't have a lot of fat, salt, and sugar in it. It's a toughie. I um, mean, I face it uh, frequently, but you can do it. You can talk to the waiter, uh, and uh, waiters, uh, I found 99% of them are very accommodating, but you just have to, and if you come in and go to a big function and you don't want to feel like you want to make a, a big scene of it, call ahead. C call ahead uh, and, uh, and tell them you're coming, that you're 80% uh, vegetarian. And you, that they can make something for you uh, that uh, you don't have to have a long uh, discussion about it. And, and you have to pick your restaurants, you know, uh, a little bit. So proper eating is extremely important. Get a regular exercise program. Uh, at least walk uh, three, four days a week, at least 30 minutes. If you can make it, if you're too busy, well, fine. But try to make it uh, 30 minutes. Maybe you can get a treadmill at home if you don't have uh, time uh, uh, to walk. And commune with nature. I mean, listen to Listen to the birds, look at the flowers. Frankly, I talk to the flowers. <laughs> it's relaxing. But sometimes uh, you have to you know, lift some light weights at home. You don't have time to go to the gym. Many of us do, don't have that sort of time. We're not retired. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, get in the program. Uh, uh, I think the Y in this uh, city is a wonderful place to go. My, mind, uh, my wellness center is a good place to go. We have yoga instructors there. Uh, we have personal training there, group training there. Uh, but I look at a person, I look at the whole picture uh, of, of, of a person. I mean, they're, they're exercising, their stress, their, men their mentality, uh, that they uh, have a uh, purpose in life. And, and, and I uh, like to stress that to my patients. When I see people that are extremely stressed out, uh, when they come to see me in the office, uh, remember, I'm a neurosurgeon, but I really don't mind if you call me Dr. Wellness, frankly. And, uh, and, and if you come to see me, uh, say, with a back pain or something, I may not say to you, uh, where do you hurt? The first thing I might uh, say to you, uh, uh, frankly, is, and what's going on in your life? You'd be amazed at what happens. I did it a few times today. Then I hear the real story, and then I can interpret the person's symptoms in terms of what's occurring to them. What occurs, unfortunately, many times in medicine today is you tell them a, a, a short story, uh, you know, where do you hurt? Here's a prescription, see you later. Well, uh, that really isn't going to do it. 
I, th I think you need to pick a, uh, a, a wellness doctor uh, that uh, will listen to you and, and you tell him what's going on in your life so he properly interprets uh, your symptoms uh, for you. Today uh, in medicine, technology is helpful, no doubt about it, but it's also in a way it's harmful. Uh, that we use studies too much, CTs, MRIs too much, and, and instead of uh, talking to the patient uh, and finding out what's really uh, going uh, on with them. Uh, uh, life has a beginning and an end, let, let, let's face it. But why shouldn't we uh, go through it uh, in the best possible healthy uh, way by establishing uh, uh, good habits and teach them to your children? I mean, your children today, they don't, they don't know what to eat. If, if, and, and most of the time, I think it's the mother. I, I, I ask the mother, 80% of the time, it's the mother. The mother has to go buy the food most of the time. And certainly some families say they don't. And you have to buy the proper food for the children. And, and if you try to change a habit of theirs, most of the time, I wouldn't even talk about it. You just buy the right food. They'll get used to the food because uh, they, they're going to be hungry. They're going to be hungry and, and, and uh, eat the right food. It can be tough. You, you have a husband at home, and, and, uh, and uh, you know, he says, i got to have my steaks. Well, maybe he's overweight and has a pot belly, and you expect him uh, to, to be healthy and live a long life. You're going to have to do something to make him change, or you're going to one day, you know, grab his chest and, and uh, have a heart attack or has developed type 2 di diabetes, uh, which is a rampant in, in this uh, community and throughout the country. We're doubling type 2 diabetes every 10 years right now, uh, which is a tremendous economic uh, impact, of course, and tremendous suffering. Uh, if you develop type 2 diabetes, which is totally, totally stoppable 90% of the time. I'm writing a book right now, uh, this, The Secret of Reversing Type 2 Diabetes in 60 Days, 90% of the Time. I'm convinced of it because I've seen it in my, uh, my classes that we teach uh, at, at uh, Lufthansa Hospital, uh, and I know it can happen. And there's a book published by Franklin House called The 30-Day Miracle. You can buy it, look at it, and read it. He totally confirms that. He can do it in 30 days. He's been doing it for 30 years. So I know I'm on the right road, and I feel confident in, in what I'm uh, uh, teaching. Uh, and, the, and that is extremely important. And the, a lot of people are, that are overweight or obese have pre-diabetes. I saw a patient with that today, and, uh, and he looks seriously overweight. And all his laboratory studies uh, were normal. It's all laboratory studies except one, his serum insulin level, it's something doctors don't pull very often. And guess what? It was out of whack. That man is pre-diabetic. That man is pre-diabetic. And guess what? He has insulin intolerance, insulin resistance, and that's already chewing up his body. But looking at him, uh, you would uh, think that is not occurring. So in summary, uh, I really appreciate uh, you uh, listening to this little discussion. I think if you follow these things, pick them off my website. You can print them off right there. And I'll be writing a book on the Longevity Mind-Body Index probably out in a few months. Uh, that uh, you will greatly improve your life, have uh, good health habits, uh, less likely to get heart disease, strokes, uh, dementia, cancer. Cancer is a lot dependent on actually on what you eat. And it's, that's not really stressed enough. Arthritis, hip replacements, knee replacements, you can avoid all this stuff. Uh, and, and I think the sound mind is the big thing. Look at my webpage, the memory page, that, that you get off the front first page where you hit that brain. Uh, and spend a lot of time on that to, to stay of sound, uh, sound mind. Uh, I think that uh, uh, would be a very good thing uh, uh, for you to do and, uh, and feel uh, free to visit. Uh, the Mind Body Institute that I have at Lufen House for our website. I probably have there now 20 DVDs. By the end of this year, I'll have 10 books. I think six of my books are on Amazon right now. And uh, all about wellness. They're all about the mind and the body, from stress to pain. Uh, the all uh, the purpose is I'm trying to get you to live to be 100, to be of sound mind, and have a happy uh, life. Thank you very much uh, for listening. I hope to see you again. <laughs>